Maria and Christina, thank you so much for being with us to discuss your new film, Take Your Pills, and Maria's new book, I've Been Thinking. We're so excited that you're here with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. We're excited to be here. Now, what advice would you give to anyone, particularly a woman, who wants to make a film or a documentary? Uh, be patient. <laughs> Be patient. I don't know what would. I would say go for it. Okay, there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's how it worked. Go for it. Be patient. Go for it. Be patient. And while we're on the topic of advice, what's the best career advice anyone's ever given you, Maria? Best career advice? Um, well, I probably would have come from Barbara Walters when I was first starting uh, in television, and I wanted to move to New York after uh, college. She said, "Go local, go small, and work your way up." And um, that's what I did. I went really small and uh, worked my way up. And I think it was a blessing that I didn't start in New York, that I had gone to little places uh, along the way, made mistakes, met a lot of people, figured out what I really wanted to do before I got to the big city. Um, so that was, I, I think there's a lot of um, wisdom in starting small, just finding out, figuring out what you like and what you don't like. I always say to the kids, uh, it's just as important to know what you don't like as what you do like. And I think, um, I think we've lost the art of starting small and, um, you know, being somebody's uh, assistant, being, getting the coffee for somebody. I did all of that. I got the coffee, I logged the tapes, I listened to the radio overnight and, um, you know, I was a sound woman. It gave me a lot of appreciation for all of this and um, what's involved in um, making a documentary, making a television piece. And so that was really good advice. I don't know. What's the best advice you've gotten? Probably from you to be vocal at work. Yeah. There you go. Great advice. Excellent yes. advice all around. Yes. Yeah. There you go. I wasn't vocal at work at her age. So that's a... A switch. It's different times now, different that's times, true. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what inspired you both to work on this project. Well, it was Christina's idea, so I'm gonna let Christina. Yeah, so I was inspired by it just from my personal experience at college, uh, witnessing firsthand how overly prescribed Adderall was and how abused it was, um, and also just the dependence on the drug and the lack of information surrounding it. So I took the idea to my mom and we just decided to, that there was like a perfect niche in there for you know, educating people on this information and trying to ignite a conversation around it. So that's how it began. Yeah, I think it's really, uh, you know, I think as Christina said, it's really uh, ignited a conversation across all age groups. We were at a thing uh, last night where so many people came up and said that they had watched it, that started a conversation in their own homes, and they spoke to their kids about it, and their kids work in startups, and then they started a conversation about it. And I think, uh, my hope certainly is that it provides parents, particularly of young children, information to push back against doctors who might say the only way for your kid to succeed and to be effective in school is to take medication. Now, for many children, that is the only way. So I think that's a segment of the population. But there are other kinds of schools out there, other learning um, models, right? There are many things available today that perhaps weren't around or weren't in the consciousness when Christina was little that parents can use effectively uh, today. When we talk about food, we talk about meditation, talk about different learning styles. And I think your whole mission was to get the information out there so not only um, parents would be armed, but doctors and educators would see how widespread this is and how abused it becomes as kids go off to college and then into the workplace. Now, when it comes to self-care, that is so important for health. Are there self-care or fitness routines that you enjoy together as a mom and daughter? Yes, what? we get our nails done. Well, that is a very important, I think, ritual to develop, whether it's either, you know, you go to a, you go on a walk, we go on walks yes, together. that's right, we go on walks together. Um, we go on walks together. Um, I mean, I think it's really important to develop self-care rituals that you can develop either with your mom, your friends, whatever that may be, whether it's getting your nails done, meditating, going on walks, going to a spin class, even going for coffee. I think that yeah. that's a mental health. Excellent. Tool. Yeah, and I think that, you know, I did not grow up with self-care. That's a new concept to me. And once again, that's been a really great um, uh, piece of advice that I've gotten um, from her and her sister. Uh, that uh, self-care isn't selfish. 
um, self-care isn't frivolous. Self-care is very powerful. And uh, I think you have to start by being kind and compassionate to yourself, and then you can move out from there, which is, I think, a, you know, I love doing, we went to lunch yesterday. I think that's a, and I was super happy at the end of it. I was like, wow, that was really fun. That was a really good thing. Uh, it's to, a form of self-care. Yeah, it's a form of self-care, yeah.